Hello everyone, I'm Adam with D&D Beyond and I'm here with you again for another development update and community Q&A session. We're gonna jump into this as always where I can leave as much time as possible for questions because I can never get through the veritable deluge of them just coming at me nonstop. So we're gonna we're gonna see how that goes today. See how much uh, water I can wade through. Latest updates. We will talk about data updates for sure. We've got some um, we've got a lot of information about ability scores today. And uh, again, as always with this information, uh, some disclaimers. This is of course across. I don't even know how many million characters we're up to now, um, 30 million or something on D&D Beyond. Uh, so it, it's definitely D&D Beyond characters. There absolutely are some weird outliers out there for people that are, you know, quote unquote, breaking the rules, or if your DM allows it, not breaking the rules. Um, and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, there will be some outliers occasionally. We do try to call this for active characters. Um, and, you know, the best that we, we know how to do that on our side. And then, uh, but either way, uh, very, very fascinating look at ability score distribution across different classes today is what we're looking at. And then uh, upcoming content, Ask Me Anything. We are going to do Pop Talk this week. So that's where I take three minutes or so and talk about anything that you want me to talk about. And I do my best to try to make this into uh, something that uh, is going to make sense with D&D. And depending on the topic, that is sometimes more funny than it is informative. But either way, we'll see how that goes today with Pop Talk. If you have suggestions, preface that with Pop in the channel. If you have questions, uh, type question before that. And then our magical uh, question omatic vat will collect those. And then later we will go through the questions. So latest updates. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we were attempting some uh, really rather ingenious updates uh, that our uh, architect and the teams were able to come up with following some of the problems that we had had with weekend stability in particular, uh, because, uh, you know, I think I informed everyone that we had a spike, uh, you know, the weekend that, that we had some downtime that was twice as many concurrent users as we ever had. Uh, this, these are good problems for us to have, of course. But um, we, you know, want to make sure that we are more than prepared for any uh, thing like that in the future. And so the team came up with a really, really interesting solution uh, technically. And if you're not technical, it will bore you to death. And if you are technical, I wouldn't be able to explain it to your liking. But uh, we, we got all of that done. Uh, and we are keeping up with the weekends at this point in time. Very, very noticeable gains after we were able to make those changes. So uh, that has been completed and we are in really good shape as of now. I am sure that you have heard that, you know, first of all, on a very serious note about the uh, horrible uh, situation in Australia with fires. And I am hopeful that you have heard about some of the charity efforts that are trying to help with that region. And one of those has been a, a bundle package where Matt Mercer has provided some updates to the Blood Hunter. We've received a lot of questions about this and we are going to get those updates on D&D Beyond, but we do not want to impact any of the charitable giving that is going on right now. And so those updates will be available on D&D Beyond for the class following the two week period that money is being collected for charity. So we hope you understand our decision in that matter. Uh, we don't want to take away from that in any way. And then uh, following that, when it becomes uh, a pay what you want and free product yet again, uh, that, that is when we will provide those updates for the Blood Hunter. So keep an eye out for that. The Encounter Tracker, this is work in progress as we've talked about. Um, I think, I don't even know, like, I don't know, should I just, I wasn't planning to do this, but should I impromptu 
show where we are with this, just where people actually believe. Let me see if it's working right now before I get too far into it. So let's see, maybe not really working yet. Oh, here's what I can do. I'm going to backdoor it here. I'm going to act like I know what that means from a technical perspective. All right, so let's see. Yeah, let's see if this works. Is this going? Oh, yeah, this will work. Nice. All right, so let me show you this. Just where you know that it's not vaporware. All right, we're going to come over here, and we are going to embiggen everything. So we've got an encounter here. And in our encounter, we're going to run that. And so we're starting to get this here. So we're going to, I don't think that, oh, it does work. Auto roll our initiative here. So we've got our initiative. We can do that. Uh, I can go in here if my players are, you know, rolling whatever here. Let me say that this is like me rolling initiative for any of my characters. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to start the encounter. So we've got the encounter going here. You're going to see that. Uh, now, again, this is nowhere near final. This is starting starting to come together here. Uh, but you'll be able to, you know, see the stats, uh, you know, pretty quickly on a simple click with your monster here. You can adjust hit points um, as needed for your creatures. Um, you know, here as well, this is going to be, you know, cleaned up uh, as we go forward. But essentially, you're going to go down through uh, all of this and be able to, you know, track initiative. And it will give you the ability to, uh, you know, continue to go through all of the different turns on here. You're going to see some of the stats that are important at a glance. All of this is coming together. The uh, eventual plan is to get this all into a sidebar where you're able to kind of, you know, manage this while looking at other information on your screen. But um, again, super, super early. So don't clip this before uh, or clip this around the things where I'm saying super, super early. But I did want to demonstrate that we are making progress here and we hope to get to alpha before too much longer. All right. Uh, the D&D Player mobile app, starting to see some of this come together as well. Very excited about this. We're going to be able to start sharing some things with you uh, pretty soon on that front as well. We are in progress on the class feature variants. A lot of complexity there that we probably could put in some kind of super quick fix for that. But that we're not really a quick fix company because we understand that if we put in short-term solutions that are going to uh, cause problems for long-term solutions. In the end, the fans and the community actually are going to suffer more because of that. So we could jury rig some things and make it work right now, but we're trying to look at this more holistically uh, to be able to support, you know, whether this is going to be an actual solution or not in a published source at some point. So we're trying to trying to go through some of that right now and uh, and you know figure out exactly uh, what scope and scale we're going to bite off here. But uh, we hope to have more news on that front uh, soon as well. Dice rolling is coming. I saw some more on that this morning. It's not quite ready to show you uh, any more on that front yet, but it is coming. And then Apple authentication uh, for sure is also on the way and that's going to be part of the mobile app release but it's also just kind of a requirement because that's how apple rolls they just make everyone kind of bend to their will and their wishes most of the time so it's great that they've got it like that but um but that's what we're going to be doing and adding apple authentication let's look at some data all right basically uh <laughs> With the data today, we're gonna to look at ability score distribution. Sorry, somebody sent me something they shouldn't have during the, the dev update. And it's like totally cracking me up on the inside. Um, so data update, ability score distribution per class. A few disclaimers here again. We try to do the best that we can to identify active characters. So um, a lot of times this data, I'm gonna give a shout out to Ian World. Um, they, uh, it ends up on Ian World and uh, 
people come in and dispute the accuracy of the data. The thing that I can tell you is that the data itself is accurate. All data is accurate. It's depending on how you are actually looking at that data, uh, you know, to, to try to, you know, inform, uh, you know, form opinions about that data. So what I can say is that we do the best that we can with, uh, you know, the data itself to, to have active characters here where we're not just, you know, uh, having just a, a thing full of outliers. But then also what mm -hmm. I can say, hold on one second, my sweet tea, I've got to... I gotta change straws to my other sweet tea because that sweet tea got too watered down. So now there we go. All right, here we go. All right, all good. So um, with this data, additionally, uh, you're go not going to see an axis that is going to show you levels that we're talking about here. So it really is just gonna be ability scores and of all the characters of that class, here is where the ability scores fall. The reason that we are not including levels here is because first of all, from a presentation perspective, it's gonna be really, really complex for us to do this in a way that's going to make any sense really whatsoever. Um, but uh, the other part of that is, as we have shown in the past, the vast majority of characters on D&D Beyond are less than 10th level and that sweet spot appears to be somewhere, you know, three to seven. Okay. So we're kind of uh, seeing with, with that being the case, most characters falling into the, uh, you know, uh, lower to mid levels here, you're going to have an ability score increase or two for the vast majority of this data. So clearly if you have a level 20 character and you've had, I don't even know how many ability score increases a fighter ends up getting, I guess, at least four, but maybe five for a fighter. Um, you know, sure, that's going to, to change this a little bit. But I'm just telling you that we have so few level 20 characters that it's not really making a huge impact to what you're going to see with this di distribution. So few disclaimers I'm throwing out there. And if you are a data scientist, I completely understand that this is probably an insulting way to present this data, but uh, we are trying to do it in a way that, uh, you know, someone like me who is not a data scientist can consume this and at least, uh, you know, say, hey, that's interesting or that makes sense or that's really surprising to me. All right, disclaimers over. So let's look at the artificer. Now, this might be hard to read on your screen, but just as we're going through here, just keep in mind that it's going to go down the left side, your physical ability scores. So it's going to be art, uh, you know, strength, dexterity, constitution, and then it's going to go intelligence, wisdom, and charisma down the right side. All right. So with uh, artificers, you see that uh, we definitely have a lot of dumping on the strength, which makes a lot of sense because eight and 10 are the most popular scores that are uh, in strength for uh, artificers. And then dexterity, uh, 14 wins out. So, you know, kind of between 12 and 14 is what we see a lot of, of that being for artificers. And then with constitution, 14 is also very, very popular. So, uh, you know, a very kind of the most typical artificer you're going to see is going to be an eight in strength, a 14 in dexterity, a 14 in constitution, a 15 in intelligence. So clearly intelligence being the key to the class, that's going to be uh, you know the biggest there. And then you see it just kind of creep up from there, 16, 17, 18. And then um, it looks like on wisdom, 12 wins out barely over 10. And then finally, uh, charisma is 23% as is uh, or 23% uh, in eights and in tens. So for the artificer, I would say looking at our data, strength and charisma are definitely dump stats where intelligence naturally is the stat that they're focused on, followed by dexterity or constitution. For a barbarian, strength, as you might imagine, is very important for those folks. Hold on one second. I'm getting like tangled up or something in my wires. It's making me feel like I can't move my head. All right. 
I could move my head again. All right, there we go. All right, so barbarian strength naturally, dexterity, uh, the highest is, you know, 14 and 13, kind of in that range. And then you do see that constitution of 15 is, uh, you know, a big deal, as is 14. This all makes a lot of sense with things like unarmored um, or, uh, oh, what is it called right now? Unarmored defense. That's it. Unarmored defense for a barbarian. You see that for barbarians, intelligence is definitely dumped a good bit. Uh, 33% uh, have an eight in that. And then uh, wisdom actually, uh, you know, fairly decent showing for wisdom. It's, you know, 10 or possibly even 12 uh, is most popular in the distribution. And then charisma is another relative dump stat, but some of them put a little bit of it in there in uh, 12s. So bards, you see that strength again, I would certainly consider that a dump stat for a bard. And then you see that dexterity reasonably high around 14. And then constitution, uh, they got to have hit points to stay alive. So it makes sense because they insult everyone around them and they get attacked a whole bunch. So that makes, uh, makes total sense for the bard. You see that intelligence is uh, really spread out for the bard. So a, a decent amount of individuals are putting uh, you know, intelligence as a dump stat for a bard, which I find is fascinating. So I think that this is a picture of the difference in the way that, um, you know, it, it, essentially bards are characterized in fifth edition, especially compared to like third edition, where a bard was very much like a lore master type character but then with the introduction of, uh, you know, something like the College of Valor, intelligence, you know, maybe seems less important for those types of characters. And uh, so I, I think that the flexibility of 5th edition is on display here. And that uh, is a really interesting thing to see. Uh, wisdom, again, for a bard is all over the place, which you might expect for a Jack of all trades type class. And then naturally, Charisma is very important for the Bard, and we see that reflected here. Cleric, this is a class that, again, really has a lot of utility and can go in a lot of directions. You can have melee-based clerics, you can have more spellcasting-based uh, clerics, and so I think you see that reflected in the ability score distribution here as well. Uh, you see that uh, you know most clerics have a pretty decent strength uh, here, but you also see a, a decent amount of clerics that are dumping that to an eight. Uh, and so, again, this is a situation where clerics are very versatile and it's going to depend on which subclass is chosen for a lot of these choices. But you see that dexterity uh, is dumped a good bit or at least baseline. But then again, you have 12s and 14s being pretty well represented here uh, also. And so I think this is going to be the difference between whether your subclass gets heavy armor or medium armor, for instance. Uh, Constitution, 28% uh, of clerics have about a 14 in there, uh, which, uh, again, makes a lot of sense. You got to stay alive in order to keep the party alive. Intelligence, pretty typical there for uh, clerics, uh, average of 10. Wisdom, naturally, is their favored stat, but then you have a lot of disparity between charisma. So are you, you know, an evangelist that has a golden tongue preaching your deity's gospel to the masses, or are you a gruff, intimidating bounty hunter for religious relics of your religious institution? So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, whatever that spread is, clerics are, you know, I, I believe the most spread out that we're seeing here with the ability score distribution. All right, we're going to do druids and then we got to go over and do a little quick voting thing here. But druids, uh, you're going to see that uh, eights and tens are the most for them in strength. Dexterity goes up a bit for a druid, again, uh, likely because of heavy or uh, medium armor. Uh, but 22% uh, have 14 in there. And then Constitution uh, 14 is very popular 
intelligence, pretty good spread of intelligence here, but Druids do tend, you'll see here between the 12 and 15, they tend to be a little more intelligent than a lot of the other classes. And then uh, Wisdom naturally, again, is, is a, a big score here. And then Charisma has a relatively good spread here as well, but you do see that most Druids are dumping it at eight. So we would expect a pretty good spread for the fighter, and we are certainly seeing it. All right, so for fighter, um, strength is going to be pretty high with a 15 here. Dexterity uh, is also, you see, between you know 12 and 15 being very well represented here. Uh, so again, is your fighter an archer ranged oriented character or a melee oriented character constitution at 14 is the winner here but 15 is also very high so all the physical ability scores very important for fighters of any type and then you see that intelligence uh ranges you know definitely a dump stat for many but uh just middle uh, of the road average is pretty popular uh wisdom actually again uh, your average of 10 is pretty popular but we do have decent amount with a 12 there and then charisma is a dump stat uh, or at least a middle average stat you do see a little bit uh, more than i would expect maybe in the 12 category there so those are possibly fighters that are a little more leadership oriented but yes uh fighter definitely no surprises expected there monks you see that strength is uh, either, you know, average dumped a decent amount. Uh, 12 is, is pretty high as, as well here. Dexterity, of course, very important for a monk. So most of them have a very high score there. And then you see, uh, so monks are uh, what they call mad for the cool kids in the circles there. So multiple ability dependent. So being mad like they are, uh, you're you're going to see that you know maybe the dexterity uh for instance 14 is also pretty popular here and that's because getting everything to 15s and 16s is is tough uh, as many things as monks need in particular with their wisdom for instance so constitution relatively high 13s 14s for monks intelligence uh middle of the road is most popular and then monk wisdom, you see that 15s and 14s are very well represented. Again, multiple ability dependent. You see that charisma is definitely a dump stat for monks. Paladins, my favorite. So with paladins, strength, very important for paladins. Dexterity is dumped in a lot of cases or average uh, because of heavy armor. Paladins don't really have incredibly compelling ranged combat builds. And so, uh, again, melee fighters, all of that's to be expected. Constitution's also at a pretty high point. You see intelligence is dumped a bit for paladins or average. And then wisdom uh, tends to be middle of the road, average, or even a little higher with the 12s uh, coming out there. And then naturally charisma is very important for a paladin. Uh, my uh, streamed character, Briv, has an 18 in charisma because it's just too good to give everyone plus four bonuses on saving throws for just standing next to you and allowing your amazingness to just simply radiate onto them. And so we all want to just radiate our amazingness onto others around us. We all want to have that kind of aura and so paladins are going to have high charisma scores. Rangers, a pretty big spread for rangers here as well, but you do see that dexterity, very important for the ranger uh, for many, many uh, types of builds that go out there for rangers. You see that strength is dumped in a good bit of cases, but average uh, to, to slightly above average, and then constitution, for many characters is an important thing. Hit points matter. Uh, intelligence is uh, average to slightly above average. Wisdom, uh, which again makes a lot of sense, is higher, you know, 14, 15 range here. And then charisma is definitely a ranger dump stat. 
And I mean, that is just all the way from, you know, the early days about Stroider and all of the, you know, like he's just so mean, puffing his little pipe and looking at all those halflings so judgmentally. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's what's going on with uh, Rangers and Charisma. Rogue, strength is a dump stat. Dexterity is hugely important for a rogue. Constitution, again, we see 12s to 14s represented uh, pretty universally across all character classes. Constitution is an important ability score. And then intelligence for a rogue is a little higher than typical class, uh, you know, other classes. Wisdom's also a little higher, but you do see that some dump that, you know, a decent amount of characters dump that. And then uh, for the rogue, charisma is also important. So I think for the rogue, the important thing here is that strength is the dump, is you know the primary dump stat that we're seeing. But then um, you are seeing that uh, kind of the dump stat can vary depending on again the flexibility of the rogue class and what kind of character you're playing. Sorcerer strength is not a strong suit for a lot of sorcerers. Uh, you see that, again, Constitution uh, near that 14 sweet spot. Dexterity is pretty important for a sorcerer. And then uh, you see Intelligence is pretty high for sorcerers. And with uh, Charisma is, of course, the crowning uh, ability score for sorcerers. We only have a couple more of these. I hope this is interesting, and I hope not everybody is just, like, completely falling asleep out there. Um, lots of classes to go through. Uh, Warlock, dumping, strength, and then you see that dexterity, again, pretty important for this spellcaster that doesn't have heavy armor, and then constitution, as expected for all classes in that range. And then intelligence is, you know, average, uh, mostly uh, wisdom is average to, to slightly above average, and then charisma at that 15 is very important for a warlock. Any warlock that needs to just Eldritch Blast over and over with their agonizing blast, charisma is going to be a big deal. As expected with the wizard, intelligence is everything. Strength is definitely the primary dump stat for wizards. Charisma is also another dump stat that we're seeing for wizards at the eight level here. And then um, you see that uh, dexterity, again, for wizards and constitution is very important because they've got to stay alive with very little armor. So that was a wide look at all the characters, millions you know, of characters on D&D Beyond Active Characters and where the ability score distribution is coming for those characters. So most of this was to be as expected, but we do see that a very high number of characters really do take that term dump stat pretty seriously. And they put, you know, as low of a statistic as they can in those scores. So you don't see a preference towards making sure everything is average, for instance. There are definitely characters out there that are dumping one statistic over another and, you know, by class, this does definitely seem to, uh, you know, follow some uh, expected trends. So upcoming. So AL support is something that's on the radar for this year that we really want to get to. Spoken about before, inventory enhancements are definitely something that we're targeting and circling uh, for 2020. We've got a site-wide survey that's coming out soon, and I've been kind of teasing it. But um, there is Dev Update, a community musical that is going to be coming pretty soon here. We'll announce the date for that, um, you know, actually pretty soon. So um, this is going to be an exciting time for, uh, for the Dev Update. And um, I have had far too much fun rewriting some very familiar songs and uh you know i the, the hardest part of this whole thing is not to just completely die laughing while i'm recording the songs so um but yes we will be having 
a musical uh, that will be coming up within the next couple of months here. And, uh, and it'll, it'll be a good old time, I assure you.